A couple of things about these five initial videos. These are the ones that are free for everyone. And for those who will be going through the admired leadership behavior modules altogether, we think of these five as sort of essential prerequisites. These videos may be free, but they are also invaluable. I'm here to tell you that even if you never watch one of the videos in the actual behavior sections, just understanding these five ideas really could transform your leadership. You're gonna have a lot to think about and put to work. You will come to understand our behavioral view of leadership and why it is so different from much of what you hear and read about leadership that's out there. We're gonna wrestle with the word authentic. Again, our definition is a bit at odds with much of the common discussion. We're gonna talk about why leadership hacks and tips and tricks simply backfire. Why the difference between technique and routine is essential to understand. Admire leadership behaviors are pretty straightforward, practical, but there are some essential elements to what backs them up. And you, you, you could call that wisdom. So we're going to define wisdom. And in the last of these first five videos, we'll grapple with that question that we hear all the time. Are leaders born or made? Well, let's start with the behavioral view. Because leadership, first and foremost, is about what you do. If you truly want to change how you lead, you need to change what you do. So let's take a look at what the best do and start trying some of that stuff. The reason I think that admired leadership is such a powerful tool is because it really focuses on the behavioral aspect. So we're not asking people to really think deeply about you know, how it is that they're actually born or how it is that their, their tendencies are, their preferences are. What we're asking them to think deeply on is what are they doing on a day-to-day -day basis to either prove or show or demonstrate or encourage other people to, to have certain behaviors and have certain actions. And when you think about it that way, if it's actionable, if it's behavior driven, then everything becomes possible. I think we're incredibly fascinated with who we are. And I think that's natural. I think people want to know who they are. I think they want to have a better understanding of what makes them tick. If you go into any university setting, any corporate uh, human resource function, you will find an individual difference approach to the idea of leadership. There's a reason when you go into the bookstore, the largest section is the self-help section. It's the largest section in a bookstore for a reason, because people are trying to figure this out and understand who they are. But what I've learned is, as powerful as that is and that awareness is, it's requisite but not sufficient to make you really, really good. So when people talk about the behavioral view, what they really want to know is how do we create the effect that we want in leadership. In order to understand the behavioral view, you have to contrast that against the psychological view. The psychological view is this idea that we need to understand how the world works. So we classify different types of leaders, we classify different types of situations and tendencies and all different kinds of nuances that make things different. And the theory goes by understanding the differences in the people and the situations and the techniques, we can know what to do in real life. The problem is, is that it requires a huge amount of mental facility to do in the moment and most people can't do it. Keeping track of that level of complexity is difficult for anybody. How we shift for this person, change for that environment, change for that persona is very, very challenging. It's impossible to kind of divorce psychology from what we do. We are kind of steeped in a psychological view. However, it's, that's not practical. We're too focused on differences. Yes, we need to understand how people are different, but the value of that in terms of practicality goes away pretty quickly. The whole notion that people want to manage everybody quite differently because they're a certain way. This one's motivated by money. This one you have to be softer with. This one can't take a tough feedback conversation. It makes it really difficult on leaders to change how they lead on a regular basis. The evidence of differences are everywhere and it's very alluring. So, so naturally what leaders do um, is they want to understand those differences. And, right, and the people that study leadership are focused on making sense of how people are, are, are different in their personalities, their learning styles, the way they make decisions, all of which makes perfect sense. Um, but the problem with that approach is it belies the fact that most leaders need tools in order to be more effective. And those ideas of differences, while they're useful and they make sense, they help you explain why it is that you do what you do. They don't explain what to do differently. 
So what admired leadership is, is an examination of the behaviors of the best leaders. What do the best leaders do on an everyday basis that you and I can do that we can master? And so when we have those tools, we can become effective leaders really pretty quickly. And at the end of the day, where that leads ultimately is to your credibility. And as a leader, credibility is all that you have. It is your ultimate uh, currency with your people. So what if I told you that we know of a lot of the behaviors, we know a lot of the kinds of everyday actions that the best leaders do, and that I can explain them and we can explain them in, in just a minute or two, and in the process of that you can emulate them and make them your own and master them to be more effective. Well that's what admired leadership is all about. The psychological view provides people with excuses for why they act a certain way. And in my experience, both as a consultant and as a coach, and even as a, an MBA student, oftentimes the, those who are steeped in the psychological view will identify more with the diagnosis of who they are and then say, well, I'm gonna act this way only because I'm this type of person. And I think that that results in people not trying to get better. And it results in them damaging relationships and not actually having an effect as a leader. So I worked with a woman who, uh, her nickname in the organization was Darth Vader. And, uh, and so for months we worked on her building better relationships with her teams, uh, checking in with people, reaching out, having more balance in her conversations. And then somebody asked her to do one of these psychological assessments. And uh, she called me up one day and she said, I'm good. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, this assessment says I have zero uh, need for connection with people. And I said, yeah. And, and she said, so I don't have to do this stuff anymore, right? It's just who I am. And so it's the it's just who I am excuse that sometimes we get pushback and people say these behaviors uh, sometimes don't feel authentic to them when the truth is that I'm not here to change who you are, uh, but I am here to change what you do. Excellence in almost any endeavor includes a series of actions, a series of steps, things that people do in order to create skillfulness. In almost any sport and intellectual endeavor, we know what those actions are. In basketball, it's tough to become excellent if you don't master the jump shot. And if you race cars, you, you need to learn how to corner. If you dance ballet, you need to understand and how to master turnout. The question is, what do leaders need to do? What, what are the critical actions that leaders need to take in order to be and achieve excellence? And, and the answer is that it comes down to the everyday behaviors that the best leaders do. We look for what's in common. We want to study the best leaders in the world and understand what they do that's similar to each other. And that's a very different take than what happens and what you can read about. For more than 30 years, we've examined leaders at depth. We've taken a look at the best leaders who have produced extraordinary results, leaders that have produced extraordinary followership, leaders that actually have both qualities. And what we have found is if we ask the question, what do those leaders do that other people don't do? We find things that are worth exploring even further and sharing with other people. Behaviors is something we can teach, we can explain, and that you can actually be able to let somebody help do. So often people want to believe that leadership, there's a big mystique around leadership, or it's something that we're going to be able to look deep into the thousands of books out there and figure it out. And instead, the behavioral view really focuses on something you can do on a daily basis in every context. It's what allows you to do your job better and handle the hard times easier and make the easy times more joyful. And I think the thing about admired leadership and the way we talk about it that's so powerful is that it's practical. It's stuff you can do. You can know whether or not you've done it, and you can know whether or not you haven't done it. And the feedback I get from clients and leaders we work with all the time is, what's different about this is, is I can implement it, and I can implement it today.